like other people do. I don't get immersed in um, trials and tribulations and adversity in life. I understand that it's part of the journey. It's part of my growth and development and evolution and me becoming the person that I was created and destined to be. And so am I going to have a pity party and tell my sad story? Absolutely not. What I am going to do is I'm going to perceive the lessons, the wisdom, the insight that this moment in my life is trying to teach me. And I'm going to use that wisdom to fuel my growth and to help me become the greatest expression of who I was created to be. Uh, I want you to understand that no person that has ascended to any height of success or opportunity in the world has not done so without some form of adversity. In fact, if you listen to this podcast over the years, I've told you that in this world, uh, you are going to encounter uh, crises, challenges, and contradictions, but there is something in you called the seed of greatness that has already overcome every challenge, every odd, every opposition. And so when you understand that there's something in you that has already overcome every thing that will ever rise in your life, then it gives you the strength and the fortitude that you need to um, thrive, to endure, and ultimately to overcome it so that you can become everything that you were created and destined to be. People often ask me, how do you keep it all together? Why didn't you fall apart? What kept you from giving up in life? And, you know, I feel like there's a lot of things we could say. There's a lot of responses we could conjure up. But I really believe that, in all honesty, there is no formula for success or destiny. You can talk to ten different people, and everybody is going to give you a different answer or response. Everybody is going to have a unique experience a unique point of view, a unique perspective, a unique thought pattern and process. And so there is no formula for success. I believe that the greatest thing we can do is to listen attentively and intentionally and with discernment and listen for the wisdom that people's lives and experiences can teach us so that we can use all of it to get better. At the end of the day, you are the master of the fate, and you're the captain of your own soul. And so at the end of the day, I always say, if it's going to be, it's up to me. You are responsible for your success. You're responsible for your growth. You're responsible for your development. You are responsible for your mastery. And certain things are not going to happen in your life unless you are willing to engage the process for those things to happen. And a lot of people are frustrated with their lives, and they're frustrated because they're not taking the actions that are going to actually move their lives forward. They're living in a fantasy world, but at some point you have to come out of the dream realm and you have to move into the realm of doing, the realm of action, so that you can see certain things manifest in your life. And I really believe that inaction is the greatest inhibitor of human potential. It's not even your circumstances, it's not your pedigree or your historicity. Most people are where they are because of inaction. And if inaction has kept you here, inaction is going to rule your tomorrow as well if you don't do something different. And so at some point in your life, you have to stop talking about what you're going to do and you have to actually take the steps and the actions that are going to move your life from where you are to where it is that you want to be. In other words, I believe that there are there are life anchors that separate those that succeed from those that fail. Write that down. I believe with all my heart that there are life anchors that separate those that succeed from those that fail. Um, one of the greatest privileges for me, and let me say this in proper context, um, in the early years, I did a tremendous amount of mentorship. Um, I mentored a ton of people, and I found myself extremely exhausted. And let me tell you why I felt found myself so exhausted. I poured all of this time and energy into these individuals trying to mentor them. And I learned that you cannot make a person 
value something that they don't respect. And so they didn't respect the time. They didn't expect, respect the wisdom. They didn't respect the information. So I removed myself, and I made mentorship something more exclusive, something that I only do with a small nucleus of people because not everybody values the wisdom and the insight that you carry. And so if you're not careful, you will pour into empty fountains that are not receptive to growth or change. And so, but in all honesty, mentorship is, excuse me, one of the most uh, satisfying and rewarding things that I have done. And it brings me great joy when I mentor individuals that actually respect and value the wisdom and put those things into practice, and they see results happen in their lives. And one of the things that I have always told my mentees over the years is I have talked to them about life pillars. Now, I don't have time to go into life pillars with you today because if I did, we wouldn't finish the topic of gratitude. But living with these life pillars and anchors is really the key to separating those that succeed from those that fail. And more than 20 years ago, I started to keep a gratitude journal. I know some people are like, oh, I don't like the gratitude journals. I don't believe in that. You know, it has no power or relevance. But I want you to really listen to what I'm going to share with you today because I believe that if you will see this through a different perspective and paradigm, it will revolutionize your life in so many ways. At the time, it was very challenging for me to come up with a list of things to be grateful for. Um, I remember at the time just staring at the page, like, what in the world am I supposed to write down? What am I supposed to put here? What am I supposed to do? And it, it was challenging. But I, however, it was something that I committed to doing daily, and after a while it got a lot easier for me to do. In fact, it became so easy and so rewarding that it was one of those things that I looked forward to every single day. And so I refused to end a day without finding something in that day to be grateful for. Uh, Those um, are some of the most important um, moments and lessons for me because it really taught me what matters and what doesn't matter in life and how we put so much emphasis on things that really don't matter and don't have significance to my life. Um, But what happened is I've become so skilled at this gratitude journaling that now I can write pages of things um, and pages and paragraphs of things that I'm grateful for poured out of me because it's become such a way of life for me. At the time, it did not seem very important or meaningful to me. However, as time went on and I found myself in some of the darkest seasons of my life, that journal meant everything to me. You know, a lot of people don't really get the gratitude journal because Let's just be honest. In our day-to-day life, in the normalcy of our lives, we don't really see the value in a gratitude journal. We don't really see the the value in listing and writing things that you're grateful for in your life. But when you find yourself in dark times and turbulent moments and seasons in your life, gratitude takes on a new meaning to you. And I know that in some of the darkest moments of my life, it was gratitude that ultimately preserved me and anchored me in those moments. And so with tears streaming down my face, I wrote. Um, This is going to be one of those transparent episodes because that's all I know how to be. That's the only way I know how to help you is being transparent. There are a lot of people that won't talk about those kinds of things because they want to portray Uh, this certain image to you, and you're not any less powerful because um, you're transparent. In fact, vulnerability is power, and I'm not going to go there. Uh, When I found myself feeling broken and in pain, I wrote, 
when I found myself heartbroken over betrayal in toxic relationships, I wrote, when it felt like my business was going to collapse and all the odds were stocked against.